Hello. The topic of our today's lecture is general inspection of the patient and its importance in the diagnostic process. I pay attention that it is more significant examination which uh, are used for diagnostics uh, because uh, visible signs of disease help the doctor formulate primary opinion, clear it uh, and uh, control treatment and health and process. Inspection must be made with uh, definite special rules. No, more comfortable and more optimal if the patient will be examined in daily time if it's impossible, will uh, obligatory uh, repeat uh, inspection, especially some parts of the body in daily time. Body should be inspected by successfully encountering the patient and examining him in direct and slight sight light. And I'll pay your attention, will examine patient continually, first of all, whole body, then will go along separate part of the body. And I'll pay your attention, will walk from up to down, from front to the back. We'll start our examination from assessment general condition of the patient because depending on general condition will be depending time of next doctor manipulation and time of treatment. General condition of the patient depends from the functional activity of vital organs, brain, central nervous system, lung, heart, liver and kidney. And if you remember and understand these principles, you easy will easy answer on this question on exam. General condition of the patient depends from the functional activity of vital organs. We distinguish three main types of general conditions. Satisfactory function of vital organs, hold, and patient can be examined any time and completely because his condition is satisfactory, no any gravated factors. Middle heaviness condition is characterized with the affection of vital organs and disturb the function, but they disturb vital activity but cannot provoke immediate death of patient middle heaviness for example patient with high fever with high blood pressure uh, with uh, some other problems which indicate about dysfunction of some vital organs and the grave condition is characteristic for the patient with poorly insufficiency of vital organs. Other words, maybe all or more than two vital organs affected and they function significantly disturbed such that we cannot give any prognosis for the patient's life. His life can be stopped any time. And you understand, depending on general condition, will determine next way of uh, his uh, treatment and examination. Patient with grave condition usually immediately hospitalized in emergency aid department because they are needed uh, constant control of the function of vital organs and sometimes the activity must be controlled by special apparatus. Middle heaviness patient hospitalized in usual uh, somatic departments depending main diseases and patient with satisfactory condition may be treated at home and control of the ambulance doctor.
Next step of our examination assessment of consciousness are the what? It is a uh, science of the functional activity central nervous system and obligatory use for assessment of general condition. Criteria of consciousness condition are the following features. Orientation of the, to the surroundings, adequate answer, concentrated attention and reflexes. Other word, to assess consciousness, we must talk with patient and pay attention how often and correctly patient will answer on our question and I pay your attention. We must ask the patient about questions which answer you know without him because you must check answer is correct or not correct. Your main mistake on exam, you will answer, what is your name? It's incorrect question because doctor unknown name of the patient with primary interest in hospital. And depending on this criteria, we distinguish two main types of consciousness, clear and deranged. We are talking about clear consciousness. If the patient will answer on our questions fastly and correctly. If any disorders, patient will answer later. His answer not completely correct, sometimes incorrect. We are talking about deranged consciousness, which appears due to Different pathology, but first of all, first of all, consciousness disorder is due to disordered cerebral or cardiac circulation because brain is very sensitive to hypoxia. And you understand uh, transport of oxygen tightly correlated, correlated with adequate blood flow. Some intoxication, endo or exogenic. Due to infectious affection, due to some metabolic abnormalities, and uh, true pathology of the brain, brain trauma, new growth, and any other pathology, on which we'll continue this talk during our course. I said you, if the patient answers on our questions later and non adequately we are talking about deranged consciousness which divided on two groups excited or depressed depressed consciousness depending uh, divided on some degrees depending Glasgow scale during talking with patient will pay attention on opening his eyes to pain or sound, motor and verbal response to stimuli. For example, cloudness is initial stage of deranged consciousness. When the patient will answer on your questions later, but his answer will be correct. More heavy stupor. Patient will answer on your questions later and his answers incorrect. For example, you will answer him what is day to day. He will answer later and can name any day of the week which not correlated with present situation. More heavy, super. When the patient sleep and can respond on your questions only after intensive stimuli. You can shake him, you can repeat your questions loudly, patient can open eyes, but his answer will be incorrect and very, very short. He can answer yes, 
no can see any words which not correlated with situation and more significant depressed consciousness is a coma when the patient doesn't respond on your questions and any stimuli. You can shake him, you can touch him, you can repeat your questions loudly. No answer from the patient. It is coma. I'll again pay your attention to assess consciousness of patient will obligatory talk with him and depending on his answer will distinguish clear or deranged consciousness. Deranged consciousness divided on some characteristic from cloudness to coma. Coma may be a result of severe vascular or other problems. And depending on diseases, we distinguish alcoholic coma due to intoxication with alcohol, apoplexic due to hemorrhagic affection of the brain, diabetic, hepatic, uremic due to intoxication with some substances which detoxication disturb due to affection of liver and kidney or severe metabolic disorders patients with diabetes mellitus, for example. Excentation of the central nervous system manifested with some irritative disorders such as hallucination or delirium. When the patient non-adequately excited, his uh, uh, behavior not corresponded of definite situation. We are talking about delirium when the patient see subject which absent in uh, surrounding. More often, uh, this uh, disorder is characteristic for the patient with alcoholism, maybe due to some psychic disorders or in uh, progressive pathology of uh, vital organs. And uh, we distinguish uh, other mental disorders such as depression and uh, apathy. Patient can adequately answer on your questions, but his behavior not completely correlated with definite situation. This uh, problem characteristic for the patient with heavy long-standing diseases. When the patient uh, uh, lost uh, wishes to health and uh, doctors see that uh, mental activity of the patient uh, depressed. He lost his interest to surrounding, to himself. He can sleep long time. He uh, forgot to wash face in morning. He forgot to eat. Uh, he can sleep with clothes and shoes because uh, he loses uh, interest to himself and surrounding. Usually, it is caused by long-standing heavy diseases. It may be tumor, it may be tuberculosis, it may be any other chronic diseases accompanied of this uh, intoxication. And sometimes needed helpness of the special psychic doctor. You see three patient and depending on the inspection we can assess this patient in tupa, this patient soap because sleep but can respond on some stimuli and patient with coma. Next step of our inspection is assessment of posture of the patient or his position in Bed. And I'll pay attention. It depends from the ability of the patient to independent 
movement, posture of the patient or his position in bed depends from ability of the patient to independent movement. We distinguished active posture when the patient independently can do any movement. Passive opposite situation when the patient unable to change his position independently. Usually there are patients in comatose stage, patient after anesthesia or patient with significant loss of weight due to long-standing diseases. Specific fourth posture uh, which is made uh, due to action of some diseases and sometimes patients don't understand one he, why he takes some or other position but he knows that this posture helps him to release some pathological symptoms. For example, patient with attacks of bronchial asthma immediately sit and press his hand on any stand on knee, on bed, on table. This position is called osepnea and helps the patient in his difficult breathing. Next step of our inspection is assessment of habitus or body build, which depends from constitution, height and weight of patient. And if all these indices are correct, we are talking about correct body structure. If any deviation, we are talking about irregular body build. Let's stop on every characteristic. Constitution depends from correlation between size of the head, neck and trunk will compare size of the chest and abdomen and length of extremities. There are main indices on which oriented doctor to assess constitution of patient. We distinguish three types of constitution, nomothenic, asthenic and hypothenic. We are talking about nomothenic constitution when the body is proportional, patient has moderate size of the head, neck, size of the chest and abdomen approximately same and moderate length of extremities. 80% of patient people has a nomothenic constitution and sometimes when we walk along the street we do not pay attention on this patient because there are usual. We are talking about asthenic constitution. When the longitudinal size prevalent it over transverse. Other word patient has small head, long and thin neck and extremities, and his chest prevalent it over the abdomen. Hypothenic constitution. Opposite correlation. Transverse size prevalent it over longitudinal. As a result, patient has high head, short and thick neck, short and thick extremities and his chest shorter than abdomen. Abdomen is prevalent over the chest. I'll pay your attention. Constitution not connects from the height of the patient. You see patient with same height but one was at ethnomacenic, other at acenic and hypocenic constitution. If you remember, I said you that uh, every action of doctor has definite aim. And if we look at constitution, why is it needed? Because some disease is tightly correlated with constitution. For example, patient with a senic constitution predilected to the lung diseases such as uh, pneumonia, tuberculosis, to anemia. Uh, patient with hypersenic constitution predilected to some metabolic disorders, diabetes mellitus, ischemic heart diseases, essential hypertension. And this knowledge helps the doctor in prophylactic work. 
especially in pediatric practice because we must start our prophylactic measures from the beginning, not from adult uh, patient. And if you see patient with some or other constitution, we can give some recommendation to prevent development and progression of some diseases. Height. Our height regulated by the glands of endocrine system and first of all pituitary, thyroid gland and sex gland. As a result, we distinguish normal height for the males and females, which slightly less. If the height more less than 150 centimeters, we are talking about dwarfishness, which appears due to hyperfunction of the inferior lobe of the pituitary and is called as nanigo, because patient delayed only in physical development, but his mental activity completely fall. More great. If the dwarfinish is caused by hyperfunction of the thyroid gland, in this case we are talking about cretinism, which is characterized with delay both physical and psychic development. Opposite situation, height more than 2 meters, we are talking about gigantism, which is caused by dysfunction of the anterior lobe of the pituitary. Next slide demonstrate you three people, one with normal height, with gigantism and with dwarfishness. And then you can compare this patient, patient with hyperfunction of uh, pituitary, nanism or hyperfunction of thyroid gland, cretinism. Weight of the patient. Tightly correlated with his height, and we distinguish normal weight, insufficient weight. In grave condition, it will be to cachexia, and increased weight or obesity. Usually, we assess weight with different. Formula, but more often we will use index body weight, which counted when we we'll divide weight of the patient measured in kilogram on his height in meters in second degree. And normally it's varied from 18.5 to 25. If less, we are talking about insufficient weight. If it increased, we are talking about obesity. More Easy variant when will minus 100 from height of the patient. For example, patient with height 180 cm can have optimal weight near it 80 kg plus minus 20 percentage depending on age. Slightly less in younger period and slightly more in adult period. But more severe variation needed more correct assessment with special formula which are used for diagnosis of obesity, degree of obesity and prescription of science specific treatment. Next step of our examination assessment of posture or attitude of patient which depends from the activity of central and peripheral nervous system. Them, development of muscles and uh, condition of uh, spine and uh, bones and joints. And if we reveal some deviation from norm, we'll find problem first of all in these systems and organs. Normally, patient has erect posture. He easy gait. His movements are free and unconstrained. To assess posture, you'll understand. You must ask your 
patient walk along the room. Nu, usually in dog chat practice, we will assess poster immediately when the patient enters in our room. On exam, you ask your exam patient to stand and walk along the room. And I said you, if the patient has erect posture, easy gait, his movements are free and unconstrained, your conclusion will be gait is energetic or active, which is corresponded of no. If any problems, for example, patient difficulty rise his uh, legs from the floor, uh, his uh, gait accompanied with friction movement, Slightly shaped. We are talking about different uh, deviation from norm. No. Gate may be weakened, may be specific posture which depends from some pathology, trying in ring, proud, and others, which you will gradually start on special causes in neurological department, in traumatological department, and any other causes. Next step is inspection of skin. We'll assess whole skin and formulate conclusion when we finish full examination. Because when the, at the beginning of our inspection, we'll assess only exposed skin. But then when we'll examine separate part of the body, we'll plus our uh, result from inspection of the chest, body and extremities, which can be covered with during inspection of skin, we'll pay attention on its color, elasticity, humidity. We'll pay attention on some eruptions of the skin and other problems such as hemorrhage, lesions, trophic changes and growth of external tumor. But I'll pay your attention. In your answer on exam, obligatory must be assessed color, elasticity, and humidity. And then you can finish your answer. No visible pathology. It shows that skin is clear without any pathological element. Now let's talk on all these characteristics. Color or shade of the skin depends from our nationality and normally we are talking about body color you, you can clear if you want but conclusion body color will be enough in pathology skin may be pale patient with anemia may have icterous or yellowish color due to pathology of liver may have some cyanotic hue, patient with hypoxia due to lung or heart dysfunction, maybe red color due to increased body temperature or some specific diseases, gray color is very bad prognosis for the patient, especially in final times of his life, brown line due to dysfunction of um, Extra renal glands, for example. Color of the skin may be changed local side of the body. In this case, we are talking about pigmentation, which uh, may be distinguished on two types, hyperpigmentation or depigmentation, absence of color on definite sides of the body. If you reveal any pathology, will obligatory show its size, location, and intensity. For example, you see hyperpigmentation on the face of patient, which is said as mother's mark or nervous. And opposite. Local hypopigmentation, which is characteristic for specific disease, pellagra. Elasticity of the skin depends from the age and tightly correlated with water balance. 
Normally, our skin is elastic. No any walls which visible on usual distance. Non-elastic skin appears due to deficiency of water in organism. Humidity also tightly correlated with water balance and normally we are talking about usual humidity which accompanied with elastic skin. In pathology, humidity decreased, we are talking about dry skin or opposite rise, we are talking about moist skin when visible drops on the water on skin as patient immediately go out from shower. Moist skin is characteristic for the patient with decreased body temperature, usually in crisis period. Patient with tuberculosis, diffuse toxic goiter, malaria, also characterized with moist skin. Dry skin, dry skin, wrinkled. Physiologically, it is connected with age of the patient and will be assessed as known. But if we see a wrinkled dry skin in younger patient, we must ask him about non-adequate loss of water, which may be after prolonged diarrhea, persistent vomiting, intensive bleeding, and needed our emergency. We can see a local dryness of the skin, which is called desquamation, which is characteristic for specific skin diseases. And again, I'll pay your attention. If you reveal any local pathology, you will obligatory show its location and express with moderate, intensive, slight and other characteristics. You see, normal elastic skin in newborn, in younger people, and physiological decreased elasticity and humidity. More completely, elasticity of the skin will be assessed during next method examination, palpation, which you will study on practical classes. But in case report, elasticity of the skin will be assessed in the part of the case report as infection. Any pathological elements on the skin, eruptions or rash on the skin, obligatory set depending on the location and character of some elements. You can see rosella, small red spot on the body, petechias, red dots on the body, erythema, more intensive reddish of the skin. We can reveal pupura, papillas, vesicles, and any other pathological elements which you will study uh, depending increased uh, knowledge of one or other diseases in different departments. Now let's remember Rush on the skin, more often characteristic for some infectious and allergic diseases. And first of all, we'll exclude these groups of diseases. But these elements may be in any other therapeutic pathology on which we will talk on our practical classes and next lectures. Hemorrhages. Hemorrhages. Also will be assessed depending on the location, expressness and character. But now I'll pay your attention on two types of hemorrhagic petechias and bruise, which more often appear in some blood and liver diseases. I'll pay your attention first of all on therapeutic pathology because uh, our course is basic knowledge of uh, first of all therapeutic pathology. You see patients with erythema, which may be allergic diseases. You can see 
fabulous patient with some infectious diseases of skin and broth of the on the body which may be result of some blood diseases lesions of the skin lesions of the skin may be result of post operative or post traumatic affection and depending location and size of the scar we can improve our knowledge about preceded operation. For example, if we see scar in right ilanguinal region, we like the patient about appendectomy because it's more characteristic location of uh, this pathology. But we can see specific lesions, Tria gravidarum, which appears without traumatization of skin, usually, uh, its a cause is a weak connective tissue which intensively dilated with formation specific uh, lesions of the skin. Stria gravidarum. Appears some women after pregnancy. Characteristic for the patient with obesity which periodically significantly loss. His weight then again increase, again loss and increase, and skin cannot adequately respond this on the uh, change of body size. And it may be as complication it's in cushion disease, specific endocrine pathology. You see stria gravidarum on lateral sides of abdomen and in ampit and lateral side of the chest. They can have a red, light brown, sometimes white color. It's not result of trauma. It is result problem with connective tissue. Non-adequate distension of skin. Trophic changes of the skin appear due to disordered blood circulation. And manifested at specific ulcers or bad sores. You see trophic ulcers of the patient uh, with uh, severe leg edema when the skin dilated and not, cannot be adequately circulated with blood, with oxygen, with some uh, micro elements. As a result, we see trophic disorders and bad sores about which we talk with you or during fourth course, which appear due to non-adequate prolonged pressure on the skin, constriction of the vessels, and disordered blood circulation. External tumors, which may be revealed on skin inspection, no, we stop on atheromas and angiopathy. Atheroma appears due to problem of this uh, fat gland of the skin which clothes and its content hold under the skin and angioma abnormal dilation of capillary it's not great for the patient but uh, may be treated due to some cosmetic uh, behavior I'll again come back to plan of our skin inspection because this question will be given on exam and we have some problem with uh, adequate answer. I'll again remember you plan of skin examination. Pay attention on obligatory indices and let's see how might be formulated your answer. You see on the patient. Our answer will be formulated. Skin is body color, elastic, usual humidity without pathologic element. Let's see other patient. And our conclusion will be change. Skin is yellowish color, decreased elasticity and humidity without pathological element. No, we'll train during practical classes and I seen your knowledge will be more good. Subcutaneous fat tissue tightly correlated with patient weight and assessed as moderate in norm 
insufficient or increased or excessive in pathology. And the last index which must be assessed on general infection is a lymph nodes. We can assess only peripheral lymph nodes with which very reach our body. And first of all, we'll examine all exposure part of the body. You see as rich with lymph nodes, neck and head, then ampit and subclavicular area and ilia inguinal area where subcutaneous tissue is seen and some enlargement of lymph nodes may be easy seen on inspection. But more full and uh, adequate conclusion may be given only after palpation peripheral lymph node. One infection is not enough for full and adequate conclusion. You see visible dilation of the supraclavicular lymph nodes, which has specific name, which is Virchow node, lymph nodes, which was uh, prescribed by Russian physician, and it is characteristic for the patient with cancerous process of the stomach or intestine. We finish inspection of the whole body, as a good general inspection, and stop on the inspection of the separate body part, which must be made with definite order, which you see on this slide. And today I'll stop only superficially on this uh, information, because we'll, uh, I'll give you more full Information when we'll study some body systems. No, for example, examination of chest. More completely, we will study together with respiratory and cardiovascular system, abdomen, gastrointestinal tract, and other with digestive system. But on the head, neck, and extremities, I'll stop today. Head inspection. Head inspection. This question also will be given on exam. First of all, we must assess position of the head, depending on trunk. It must be along median line of the body, which will be assessed as usual, which is corresponded of norm. Unusual position of the head when it's slightly moved to any side, maybe due to cervical myoditis, spondyloarthritis, or stiff neck. Complication of uh, abnormal uh, new one. Then we'll pay attention on shape or configuration of the head. Normally, our head has oval or round shape. Obligatory pay attention on proportions, correspondence of facial and cerebral part, which normally must be approximately same. We are talking about proportional head. But if the prevalent cerebral part, usually it is result hydrocephalus, or opposite small cerebral part, microcephalus, prevalent of the face, facial part is acromegaly, then we'll pay attention on hair covering. Our conclusion will be given depending on sex we are talking about. Female or male types. We can see sometimes specific movements of the head, which uncontrol definite situation. And we distinguish two pathological movements. No, it's for today. Then every year your uh, knowledge will be improved. Now I want that you remember two specific movements. Mustache sign, when the head moves synchronously with pulsation of the arterial pulse or carotid artery, 
and Pakistanism, when the movements of the head are uncontrolled and not correlated with any other movement. And will obligatory assess faith expression depending definite situation, which is the order of the head inspection. You see patient with acromegalic faith when the facial part significantly prevalent it over cerebral. You can assess proportional head, hydrocephalus, microcephalus, and specific triangle cerebral parts, which is characteristic for specific types of amoeba. Hair covering, I said you, depends from sex and assess as male or female type. But in some pathology may be abnormal growth of the hair. It may be excessive. We are talking about hypertrichosis or hirsutism or opposite deficient growth which may be diffuse or local. Hirsutism is characteristic for tumor of adrenal or sex gland. Deficient growth may be result of hypofunction of thyroid gland myxedema or patient with progressive liver cirrhosis. Local deficient growth of the hair is called as baldness or alopecia, which may be result of some specific diseases of the skin or some infectious diseases. We'll pay attention on color of hair to reveal some hair pigmentation disorder. You see patient with hirsutism, you see patient with alopecia, local affection of uh, hair growth, and you see problem with hair color. But again, it must be correlated with the age of patient, which may be assessed as physiological or pathological. Face expression. Obligatory correlated with definite situation. And if it is corresponding definite situation, may be assessed as usual. In some pathology, we distinguish apathic, suffering, impressed, exhausted, or other some specific faith expression, which not correlated with definite situation and indicates about some psychic or other pathology of inner organs. We distinguish some special facial expression. For example, puffy, dematic face is characteristic for patients with renal diseases, some venous congestion or compression of lymph duct, upper parts of the body, when the liquid holds on the face and subcutaneous face. Specific cardiac face is characteristic for patients with heart failure, cardiac insufficiency. But as hypocratica is characteristic for diffuse peritonitis, sepsis, and usually it formed in final stage of the patient's life. But as fibrillis, patients with high fever, and acromegalic face specific facial expression. We'll stop on other characteristic of uh, facial expression when we'll study some or other pathology. Today I'll give you only superficial oriented information. And I'll again come back to conclusion which must be formulated after head inspection because this question very badly answered on exam. You see order of head inspection then you see head of the patient and let's formulate conclusion, formulate for yourself and compare with my true conclusion on which you must be oriented. Head is usual position, round shape, facial and cerebral part proportional, hair covering is female type and usual face expression. I won't stop on inspection of the face. 
which also may be given as separate questions. First of all, we'll pay attention on its symmetry and you see patient with symmetric and patient with asymmetric face. Then expression or continence of the fate, about which we said one minute ago. Its shape, regular or some specific, thunking, swelled or moon-like and acromegalic, maybe any other abnormal shape. We can see some asymmetric movements of facial muscle due to cerebral problems or some affection of facial nerves. Facial neuritis, for example. It will obligatory inspect eyes, nose, ears, and mouth, after which we can formulate full conclusion. When we'll inspect eyes, again, first of all, we'll pay attention on the symmetry, normally symmetric, pathology, asymmetric, which is called uh, squint or stabismus which may indicate about some pathology of the nerve, endocrine or brain affection. We'll pay attention on width of the eyes. Usually it's moderate. In pathology, maybe wide due to patient with thyrotoxicosis or opposite narrow width in the patient with edema or myxedema. We'll pay attention on eyes shape, normally the usual. They protrude exophthalmos, patients with cytotoxicosis or retrobulbar tumor. You understand cytotoxicosis, symmetrical problem, tumor, asymmetric affection. And opposite, enophthalmos, depressed eyes, patient with myxedema. You'll pay attention on tear secretion. Usual, unvisible, or maybe hypersecretion and hyposecretion when the eye becomes dry and as a result accompanied with some pathology of eye. We'll pay attention on sclera, which is usually white color and the set as usual. In pathology, it may be yellowish color, it's a rose, red color, hyperemic, and we can see some hemorrhagic spots. And obligatory pay attention on pupils, which is glut of the central nervous system. Any pathology with brain obligatory, obligatory manifested with changing size of pupils. You see patient with asymmetric face due to edema of eyes. You see stabismus when the eyes not symmetric. You see exophthalmos or and of thalmus, patient with yellowish color of sclera and hemorrhagic spots. Pupils are scheduled, which is glass of the uh, central nervous system. Normally, they must be symmetric. Asymmetry of the pupils is called anisocaria. You see one wide and it other narrow bit. We pay attention on shape and size and decrease narrowing of the pupils is called meiosis, opposite widening midriasis. Meiosis is characteristic for intracranial hemorrhage, some poisoning, growth of tumor and uremic intoxication. Midriasis. Is characteristic for any unconscious patient except uremic coma, poisoning with atropine and result of cerebral hemorrhage. We'll pay attention on convergent response of the pupils on movements of some subject and the ability to hold pupils on some distance. We'll pay attention on accommodation, response of the pupils on light, and some may be seen some pathological pulsation of pupils. No, more completely, you will stop on this pathology in neurological department because I said you, eyes is a glass of the photophore condition of central nervous 
system. During inspection of node, we'll pay attention on its size, which normally usual, but we may be enlarge patient with acromegaly, maybe uh, this figure of patient with arena scleroma. Shape of the nose also may be changed in some pathology. It becomes subtle, for example, after syphilis or in its chronic development. Soft tissue of the nose, this figure in lupus and lepra, sometimes significantly, and some systemic diseases, you see specific affection of the nose. And we can reveal some trophic disorders or hyperpigmentation, which also may be a result of specific diseases or new growth. We'll pay attention on expression of another labial faults, which indicate about some pathology. During inspection of the ears, again, we'll start our examination from assessment his shape and size. And color of the skin, which may be locally changed due to some specific pathology. We can reveal some pathological elements, for example, nodules, which is characteristic for some systemic diseases, but full, full and adequate uh, answer may be given only with special otolaryngologic physician, which superficially and deeply examined ears and nose. We can give only superficial characteristic, and our conclusion must be finished obligatory with what's on visible inspection or no visible pathology because without special instruments we cannot deeply examine these organs and give true conclusion. Inspection of the mouth included in exam questions. And I'll pay your attention on order of mouth inspection. We'll start from the lips. You remember our principles from up to down. Yes. Then we'll examine teeth and gums. Pay attention on oral mucus. Obligatory as the patient opens the mouth. Examine his tongue and tonsils. Examination of Lips. First of all, we'll pay attention on shape of the mouth. If it's symmetric, our conclusion will be usual. We can reveal some asymmetry on mouth angle. Mouth may be permanently open without definite needed. We can see some specific deformation, cleft lips, for example, when the mouth connected with North, which is a new one, hereditary pathology. We can see some specific deformation of the lips. Then we'll pay attention on order. Usually, no any order from the patient. If we feel any specific order, first of all, we pay attention on the oral cavity because it may be connected with some visible affection or inflammation of the mouth structure. If no problem, first of all, we must examine lung and stomach of the patient, because it's tightly connected with mouth, and all pathological uh, orders will be removed through the mouth. And if no problem, we'll find any intoxication. For example, maybe ammonic order from the patient with renal insufficiency, acetone order from the patient with diabetes mellitus, putrid order due to uh, putrid inflammation or significant disordered digestive process, fated order or any other specific. We'll pay attention on color of lips, which normally must be pink. In pathology, maybe red, bluish, 
gray depending of gravity of disease. Sometimes we can see some eruptions on the lips. You know, for example, cold sores. I think sometimes you was uh, sick with such problem. Herpes labialis more often appears in cold season. And specific fissures in the mouth angle, which appear due to some hypovitaminosis due to pathology of the small intestine or any other metabolic disorder. Teeth may be assessed only superficially because full conclusion may be given only stomatological physician. But visually we can assess his color, we can say healthy or uh, not uh, teeth because it's easy visible on superficial infection. We we'll can see dangerous in the mouth. Then we we'll assess condition of gums. Pay attention on its color. Can be revealed edema, ulceration, some hemorrhage from the gums which not needed special examination. Oral mucus. First of all, when you ask the patient open the mouth, we'll pay attention on condition of soft and hard palate of the oral cavity. Usually, it has pink color and may be assessed as usual oral mucus. It's enough for conclusion. But if you reveal some changing of color, you can show its local or diffuse. We can reveal... Uh, some hemorrhagic spot, we can reveal abnormal coating on the mucus, on the uh, near the lips or other parts of the oral cavity. Tonsils also may be examined only superficially, but we can see that its size increase because normally tonsils Unvisible or slightly visible, maybe change its color, will pay attention on presence of patch, lacuna, purulent cork, which indicates about specific uh, pathology, tonsillitis. And your tongue is glut of uh, digestive system, will assess its uh, size, which may be enlarged in patients with some diseases on which will stop later, will pay attention on color, obligatory assess it's moist or dry because dryness of tongue is signs of heavy pathology and hypohydration. Will pay attention on condition of papilla which must be slightly visible. In pathology they may be hypertrophied or opposite atrophied. Position of the size to reveal some deviation. And if you reveal clear red and moist tongue, it may be a result of peptic cancer. Crimson red in large smooth tongue with atrophic papilla is a result of B12 deficiency anemia. Dry tongue with brown coat or grobis is characteristic for some infectious diseases of grave poisoning. No, we can talk about tongue long time, now we haven't this time, but we'll come back to some uh, pathological characteristic during studying of some diseases. And you will be improve your knowledge all your life if you will work as doctor. You see usual tongue, yet each is done with the hypertrophy of papillus, geographic tongue. Each is opposite condition, smooth, bright red tongue with atrophic papilla. Tongue with coated with white coating, diffuse or locally, with brown coating. And you see pathological deviation of the tongue, which indicates some urological disorders. I want to formulate you correct conclusion on mouth inspection because I said you this question will be given on exam and you have some problem with formulation correct answer. 
mouth is usual shape without pathological order. Lips are pink. Teeth, gums, oral mucosa are usual color without visible pathology. Tongue is usual position, size and color, moist and clear. Tonsils without visible pathology. It's enough for correct answer after inspection of the mouth. We'll assess generally are there all main elements of oral cavity. But you must obligate your at the patient, open the mouth and assess all elements of the oral cavity. Next part of the body is neck. On inspection of neck, we'll pay attention on two main vessels, carotid artery and jugular vein to reveal the pulsation or swelling and thyroid gland because we can see its visible enlargement. We'll stop on full examination of vessel and thyroid gland when we'll talk about pathology cardiovascular and endocrine organ. And sometimes we can see enlarged lymph nodes. I said your neck is very rich with lymph nodes, which is easy seen due to the enlargement. Now you must remember on neck inspection, we'll pay attention on superficial vessel, thyroid gland and peripheral lymph nodes. Inspection of the body will continuously examine chest, abdomen and back of the patient pay attention on spinal cord. Inspection of the chest includes information about its shape, type of respiration, some pathological deformities, more completely, we'll stop on this characteristic next lecture when we'll talk about pathology of respiratory system. But now I'll see you only some visible specific deformation. Inspection of the abdomen includes uh, information about its symmetry, size and shape, mobility of the abdominal wall during breathing, about which you forgot on exam, position of navel, which usually depressed in some pathology may be good, and some visible peristalsis movements or local affection of abdominal skin or some pathological formation. You will have full information about abdomen inspection when we will talk about pathology of digestive system and I'll give you full characteristic of every element. Now I'll give you only superficial characteristic. Examination of muscular system includes information about the development. We can reveal local atrophy of the muscles, for example, compare one and other sides of the body, one and other hand. We can reveal some determination uh, of muscular trends and detection of functional muscular disturbances, cramps, which may be seen on superficial examination. Cramps appear due to renal insufficiency. It may be specific signs of some pathology such as eclampsia. It may be result of a hepatic insufficiency due to intoxication, meningitis, inflammation of the central nervous system, brain, 
tetanus specific diseases which is characterized with cum. It may be result of dehydration patient with cholera. And you remember depending development of muscular system will depend gait of patient and if we reveal some problem with gait we'll pay more full attention on inspection of muscular system. And finish our inspection with inspection of skull, spine and extremities. Inspection of the spine will pay attention on its physiological deviation. We distinguished four physiological deviations, two lordosis and two kyphosis. But maybe some pathological kyphosis or lordosis or scoliosis, side deformation of the spine which may be result of specific pathology of the spine or complication on any diseases. For example, maybe complication such pathology as tuberculosis or some specific pathology. You see severe scoliosis, you see scoliosis with kyphosis and also severe scoliosis. You'll understand its effect uh, activity of the first of all chest organ. Uh, lung and heart can change its position and uh, manifest it with some subjective discomfort. Inspection of the extremity includes information about examination of limbs when we can reveal some deformities, uh, problem with muscles, we can reveal trauma of extremities, the edema, changes, local changes of skin as scar, ulcer due to trophic disorders, which I saw you some minutes ago. We'll pay attention on cause of weather to reveal specific pathology, very positive of the vein. And you'll understand all the elements can indicate about uh, some or other diseases. Joints examination. Joints examination includes information about the uh, visible changing and uh, Assessment uh, ability to movement because from uh, condition of joints depends our uh, movement activity. We'll pay attention on fingers of patient to reveal specific hypocratic or drum sticks fingers. We'll pay attention on nails characteristic. Because some pathological shape, clog glasses, nails, characteristic for hypocratic fingers. We'll pay attention on the color, which can only indicate about hypoxia or some other problem. We can see breakage of the nails, which indicates about, about some metabolic disorder, deficiency of some vitamins or micro elements. Longitudinal and transverse lines on the nail also can indicate about some uh, hypovitaminosis or deficiency of some micro element. But I pay your attention, hypocratic fingers and clock glasses nail indicates about chronic purulent process of the lung. Long standing subacute septic endocarditis, congenital heart defects and liver cirrhosis which are also long standing. It's not characteristic of only one pathology. First of all, it is characteristic for chronic pathology and pay attention of the doctor on long-standing diseases because there are specific deformation. You see specific deformation of extremities, 
like X, the characteristic for phyphilis. You see very cozy the dilation of the vein. You see trophic disorder, gangrene. You see some specific changes of nail due to bad care of the patient, which is characteristic for senile patient. You see changing of the peripheral part of the finger, which is drumstick finger, because its peripheral part specifically widen it and enlarge. And changing of nail shape compared normal and glass like nail. Other words, I'll show you hypocratic finger, drumstick fingers, which has specific thickness of peripheral part of the finger, which nails also has specific clock or glass like shape. And again, repeat that hypocratic finger indicates about long standing chronic, maybe purulent cause of diseases. You see specific changing of nail shape, which may be result of progressive uh, anemia. You see breakage of nail with transverse line or longitudinal line, which also indicates about some deficiency of micro element. First of all, it may be iron deficiency anemia. And I won't finish off our lecture on joint examination because these questions will be included in exam questions, but uh, we you not have special class on joint diseases. During joint examination, first of all, we'll pay attention on its shape to reveal some deformation or dislocation. We'll pay attention on local changing of color due to hyperemia because increased temperature or any other problem. We'll pay attention on size of the joints to reveal edema compare asymmetric due to local edema. Obligatory effect articulation ability to movement and we distinguish active when the patient moves with his joints independently or passive when the doctor moves the joints of the patient. One finger fix joints which located above exam, other finger, other hand moves joints in definite uh, direction depending the characteristic because every joint can do specific uh, movement. During palpation of the joint or sometimes during active movements on inspection, we can reveal some crepitation, we can reveal some restriction active or passive movement and the tenderness. And will affect uh, movement are uh, painful or restricted due to active inflammatory process or other some other pathology, for example, trauma, or they restricted due to some pathological formation, for example, decreased activity elasticity and as a result uh, activity of ligamentum which fix joint in definite position. And our conclusion must be formulated with definite order. No, for example, we'll examine knee joint and I formulate you a conclusion which is characteristic for no. Knee joint is usual shape without visible pathology. Active and passive movements are full and painless. 
But I'll again pay your attention. Uh, for order of examination and formulation correct conclusion. Because on inspection will be given very more questions on exam. Every exam task will include questions about inquiry, inspection, palpation, percussion, auscultation. All steps of physical examination. And when you inspect of the patient, not enough only uh, go to the patient. You must give him some direction that your conclusion was agile. Because every your conclusion you must be ready to explain and will obligatory ask you why do you think that uh, active movement of the patient full? If you didn't ask the patient moves with her knee or other joint. It shows that your conclusion not objective because it may be objective only after full examination, which might be visible for the exam teacher. No, will be class on general inspection and will pay attention on inspection of some part body when you will study some organs and system. And I see at the end of our course, you improve your knowledge. And we'll finish our course with a positive marks. Positive marks. That's all information which I want to give you today. Thank you so much for your attention. Goodbye. Be happy.